Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. It's beta testing time and today we've got Kaspersky Internet Security version 2016. This is a really early beta, a technical preview, which means it has its fair share of bugs. Now I'm going to start off this video with this bug. It might be known to Kaspersky already, but I just want to highlight this databases are extremely out of date. The funny thing is the update does not update the text over here. So regardless of the fact that I've done an update just less than a minute ago, it still says databases are extremely out of date. So that is an issue that they're probably working on. Now the new things in this version First of all, we've got this brand new feature that I'm interested in called System Changes Control. It comes disabled by default right now, and as you can see, they haven't even worked on the description for this component. But what it does is it can control changes to your browser, like your search engine homepage. And what we're going to do in this test is we will definitely try this out. So I'm going to block all kinds of browser changes. This is actually a great way to stop your computer from becoming hindered by a lot of PUPs because it's really hard to blacklist specific PUPs. But if you block the malicious changes that they make, they can be avoided. Now here's another thing that you can do. You can show it warning if applications are installed or browser settings changed during an installation. I'm not going to do that but I'll just block all kinds of changes to my home page, search page, proxy server settings, toolbar to avoid lots of unwanted PUPs and ads. So let's see how this component works out. I'm sure we've got some adware within our links today. In fact, I try to get as little of adware as possible, but nowadays that's the majority of things that's out there. Now, rest of the components are very similar. In fact, the user interface is exactly similar to what we had last time. I don't really see much of a difference. It's very minor. And application control, once again, this is their main zero day component. It's kind of similar to Komodo, a little bit more lenient, so easier to use, but at the same time, not, not very strict. So let's go ahead and get testing in. Let's see how well this product performs. I've got a pretty good selection of links, but before we get to that, just want to make sure we check out this product's RAM usage. Now at the moment, it's using just 43, 44 megabytes, which is really nice. This is their GUI, which was taking up a ton of RAM just a moment ago, but it dropped to zero when I closed their AV interface. Now RAM usage goes up and down, can't really be too certain on that, but what I have noticed is it doesn't take a lot of CPU, and it definitely seems to be an incremental improvement from the previous version so it's definitely faster and more responsive and lighter on the system than its predecessor and that is impressive considering this is a beta sometimes beta products have really high memory usage but that's not the case here so let's get started with the test so these are our links Let's give them a shot and see if Kaspersky's brand new product is up to the challenge. Here is the first URL and this time I've got the virus toll detections at the side as well. So 13 engines detect this. Considering Kaspersky is a pretty popular choice, I would expect it to be there within those 13 but I don't actually remember if it is or not so let's just run it and find out some of these malware servers can be really slow at times but we can wait 10 seconds Here we go. And 
and this looks like some kind of Chinese adware. Interesting. Now the next file has got really low detection. In fact, I'm not certain myself whether or not this is malware, but we'll find out when we do our second opinion scans and we'll see what it actually does to the system. And based on that, we will give our final verdict. Now as you can see, this thing is going to download and install a ton of adware which includes 360, which itself is an anti-malware product. So we'll go ahead and install that and we'll run this file too. Again, some language I do not understand, Chinese or Japanese. Here we go, third link, and finally, the cloud protection or their website blocking feature in action. Good to see that and no surprises there because it's detected by 41 engines so most people already have that threat blacklisted. Here's another piece of malware. Just load it in a new tab. Okay, we already have the download request, so not blocked by the web blocking feature. That is interesting because it does appear to have plenty of fast total detections. So it's detected by a ton of engines. Now the next one has just got a detection of 4 out of 62, which is pretty low, really low. Now let's see if this one gets blocked when we run it. It appears not. Let's proceed. Let's just extract this. One of the files that is malicious might be part of this package and Kaspersky might block that. Hopefully Let's try extracting these files to our desktop. Interesting, so no detections here. And we've got plenty of executables to run. And things disappearing, definitely not looking good. Okay, this is actually a signed package from 360. So I'm not going to run that because I have no intention of installing another AV on this machine and, you know, that might want to uninstall Kaspersky. Actually, I guess it's not going to uninstall it, It'll probably run side by side, but then I wouldn't be able to complete this test successfully. So we won't be doing that, we won't install 360, we'll just see if it installed anything else that might be detected by our second opinion scanners. Now let's get to the next link. Just found out the previous link is dead, so we'll try this one. And I'm going to save it because it's a zip file. Well, let's go ahead and open it and extract the malware onto our desktop. And it seems to have extracted just fine. Now, I haven't seen the real-time protection from Kaspersky pop up even once, which makes me suspicious as to whether or not it's even working. But as you can see, it is set to recommended protection. It's turned on. Now, if it doesn't work or something, there's nothing I can do about it. And even the update, we've done the update several times before the start of this video and we did it again at the very beginning, so no issues there.
Now this is a page that is blocked. Dangerous URL. Rightfully so. Now this is an interesting threat and the funny thing is it is actually blocked so that's great that is in fact good news because it's just detected by six engines and looks like Kaspersky is one of them as you can see malicious link blocked Here we go. This is our next link, and this is also blocked. So the web filter is kicking in and blocking a lot of these links now. And surprisingly, some of these have got really low detections, and Kaspersky still have managed to blacklist the sources of the links, which is a pretty good job. Once again, the link is blocked. This one appears to have bypassed the web filter. And the antivirus filter as well. So that's not good news. Here is another malicious domain. So we've got two more links to go and then we can start checking out if the system is infected or not. Unknown file.exe. Definitely not a good name for malware because people are going to read this and probably not execute it. It's more like a warning than a temptation. But we'll run it anyway. This one appears to be dead. Let's go ahead and try the last link and that will be it. And this one is blocked. So that is a good job once again because it's just got a detection of 4 out of 57. So Kaspersky did pretty well with the links that it had signatures for. Or should I say it had signatures for quite a number of threats that had low detection. So definitely some good job there. But apart from that we've got tons of things on the system that it did absolutely nothing about and even when we run these things I'm not sure if they're being blocked by the application control or if they're just running and maybe not showing themselves as you can see these are all low restricted so we'll go ahead and see if they have done any damage so I'll restart the system and then we'll run our second opinion scans. In fact, um, just to give Kaspersky another chance because this is a beta and I'm not even sure if the file antivirus was working correctly, I'm going to run a quick scan. And once that's done, I'll reboot the system, run some second opinion scanners and we'll see what we get. The Kaspersky quick scan didn't find anything, so I went ahead and ran our second opinion scans, but before we get to those results. Now the funny thing is, our home page was changed to this 360.cn Chinese domain home page. And that is something I specifically selected over here. Block changes automatically to browser settings and despite doing that we still had this home page alteration. Now that is definitely something that is not desirable so they need to work on that. Apart from that 
Okay, this is just, I just did this to show you guys that the home page has indeed been changed and I didn't just navigate to that website. But apart from that, it looks like Kaspersky did a pretty decent job. Malwarebytes didn't find anything. And neither did Hitman Pro. Now surprisingly, Zamana found a few threats, in fact 13 of them, but they're all these desktop files. So no real active malware infections there. Which is great news. Now I'm definitely impressed with the way the zero day components handled the unknown threats and although we have some malicious items sitting here and there we don't have any active malware on the system and no damage has been done. So that is definitely great for Kaspersky and I'll be really happy if their 2016's final product performs well. But at the same time, I mean, this is not sloppy, but definitely not the most ideal or best performance that you would expect from a security suite like Kaspersky. Now, I'll give them the benefit that this is just a beta, so I'm not expecting too many huge things over here, but when the final version comes out, it should be way more polished and issues like these should be taken care of, especially the browser monitoring feature. I think that needs some improvements and maybe permanent. I, I don't even know if it even if it's activated at this stage or if it was just there and it did nothing. But whatever the case, I'll be taking a look at their final version whenever it comes out and that's when I'll be giving most of the remarks. As for now, definitely promising some good new features, but not the perfect product, not yet still some fine-tuning to be done which is expected given that this is a beta but I hope they do do that fine-tuning so I hope you guys enjoyed this review this is the PC security channel signing out and I'll see you guys in the next video stay informed stay secure